Anyway, with our uh, first uh, speaker is uh, Christophe Rutenauer, who is from the Université de Québec à Montréal. Uh, and he will be talking about an arithmetical characterization of Christoffel words. Uh, thank you very much to give me the opportunity to give this talk. Uh, so I will give a, a characterization of Christoffel words. And let me first define what is a Christoffel word. I have drawn in advance this, this uh, drawing. I'm afraid it's a little bit too small, but uh, it's a Chris Christoffel word. A Christoffel word, I, I suppose many of you know what is it. Uh, you, you choose first uh, two integers which are relatively prime. So, so and Christoffel word of slope, Q, Q over P. Q, Q and P are integers, relatively prime, positive. Uh, and uh, here I have chosen four and three. The slope will be so, uh, uh, and you draw the, uh, the point of coordinate four, three, and then the, the diagonal in this rectangle from zero, zero to the diagonal. And then you discretize by below by using only horizontal and vertical steps, you discretize this segment. So the drawing is perhaps not clear. I have drawn in yet. Yeah. This should be green, but do you see green? Oh, I don't know. Green. So I have three, these green steps and these uh, red steps. And uh, I, I draw it, it is the discretizing from below. I mean, the, the polygon here, the polygonal line here is, the, is very close to the diagonal in such a way that there is no integer point strictly below, uh, strictly between uh, the diagonal and the path. So the path, once you have the path, you, you, you code it by letters A and B, A for horizontal step and B for uh, vertical step. So this is the word A, A, B, A, B, A, B. And the B, the, the A's are for the green steps and the B's for the uh, red steps, uh, vertical. And this, so it's this, this is the Christoffel word, let's say C word of slope, uh, slope uh, three, four, three over four. Now the, the slope is the number of B's divided by the number of A's. Uh, so, I, so I have defined now, uh, Christopher Howard are defined, and uh, I need now the notion of continuum polynomial. So let me first say what I call a, Christ, a, a, a Christopher class. The Christopher class is the is the conjugation class of a Christopher word. word. Uh, well, Christopher words are, in some sense, uh, naturally circular words. So it's natural to consider the conjugation class. Conjugation class in the word sense. And you, you take the word and you cut it in two and uh, you exchange the two factors. Now I need the notion of what continuant polynomial. This, these polynomials are very well known to the to people who who know continuous fractions. Uh, they are defined 
uh, recursively due to, uh, by the recursion p of x1 is n. So uh, p is the notation for the continued polynomial. And uh, x1, xn are, can be variables or integers, something in a ring. But we, we need them only for um, integers. So there is the recursion. P, it's equal to P of x1. It's a two. Uh, it's a recursion of length two. Uh, plus P of x1, xn minus two. So, and if the initial conditions are, initial conditions are P of x1, if when you have only one, P of x1 is x1. And when you have two, uh, and no, even when you have no, no, uh, no, no variables at all, I mean, when n equals zero, there is no variables. This is equal to one. As this, for it is enough to. Uh, these two initial conditions, together with the uh, recursion, defines completely the continued polynomials. Now I think I can erase but the blackboard. My blackboard is rather small. It's a real blackboard in. Uh, on Ardoise, in, in English, I don't know what's Ardoise. It comes from a primary school and it was a gift of my friend Srechko. Uh, and it's very small, but so I have to, I have to conjugate it when I've drawn here, uh, when I, I continue here. So let's, uh, examples. Uh, the P of X, X1, I have, x1 p of x1 x2 will be and you take uh, it will be p of x1 x2 plus p of of nothing and this is the recursion and so this is x1 x2 plus one uh, let me compute this third one p of x1 x2 x3 is so p of uh, I, I I don't do the details here now. I give a uh, real examples because I need them in the after. Let me compute the real examples. For instance, p of p of um, one to two. One, two, two. And you can take this formula, for instance, uh, or with the recursion, it's p of one, two, plus by two, plus p of one. This is the cat. And uh, this is equal to p of one, two. This is equal to, with this formula, you take the product when there are only two variables, you take the product of the two variables and add one. So it's two plus one, it's three. So this will be six and this will be seven. And the P of one, two, two, two is equal to. So the value for this seven by two plus the value for this. We, and this we have seen this three. And so it must be uh, one, two, two, two. And oh, no, I don't really need this. I'm sorry. It's not this one I wanted. It is a P of. Oh, yeah, no. Yes, I'm completely on the wrong direction. P of one, one, two, two is equal to, look, uh, I don't, oh, let's, I, I simply write the value, huh? P of one, two, 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 and the other one is P of two, two, one, one, is equal to, um, 
12. Ah, also, also. ah yes, this is a property when you reverse the order, when you completely reverse the sequence, the value is the same. But I, I don't want to insist too much on the uh, properties of continuous polynomials. Uh, the so now, now I consider uh, any word W in A B star. I want to characterize the Christopher word. So, and I consider a, a substitution, a morphism, a monoid, a free monoid homomorphism from A B star into the free monoid generated by one and two. So here the letters are one, two, here the letters are A, B. And the morphism is chi of A is one, one. So it's, a, it's the word one, one, uh, the word of length two in this free monoid. And chi of B, B is two, two, two. Also the, the word of length two, two, two. Um, Mm, that's it for the definition. So, so the theorem is the following. You take W primitive. Uh, this is, let's say, a uh, technical condition. W is pr primitive. And we, we have the equivalences between the two conditions. The first one, uh, I take W in the uh, free monoid generated by A, B star. Uh, w is conjugate to a Christopher word, it's the C word. And the second condition, uh, it's a little bit, it is visible. The second condition is you take the image of W by chi. So you take U equals chi of W. And uh, I, I need notation. One, it's a, it's a word of length, even, even length, uh, because of the form of chi. And the condition is. Uh, oh wait, yes, pardon. I think it's not, I have no room enough. I have to put it here. The second condition is for each conjugate, U equals A1, A2N. And so this means the, the length of W is N, and the length of chi uh, of chi of w is two n. One has a p, a condition with the continuous polynomials, p of a one a two n uh, minus p of a two a two n minus one is smaller or uh, or equal to three times P of A2, A2N. Uh, so this is the, uh, this is the uh, condition, the characterization. So here, Christopher Ward, and here there is some arithmetical uh, condition. Let me show uh, an example. Uh, examples. Example. I take uh, the example is very uh, small, but because otherwise the calculations are too big. I take simply a b. It's a Christopher word of slope one 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 over one, so one. Uh, and so key of w is equal to 1, 1, 2, 2. And you replace A by 1, 1. And so I, I, I now compute P 
this quantity, it will be one, one, two, two for this conjugate. Now you see, you take the whole uh, word here, then you, uh, uh, you remove the first and last letter. So P of one, two, and this, I now subtract this minus three P of here. I remove only the first letter P of one, two, two. And now you must uh, trust me. This is this was equal to 12, 12 minus this is a three. And this is three times seven. Yes, this is seven. And so I obtain uh, something negative, minus six. Uh, it's, uh, it must be negative. Now take another conjugate of this. I take the completely two, two, one, one, minus P to one, minus three times P of two, one, one. And now here, the value is the same, it's 12. The value here is also the same, but the third one changes. 211, um, 211, it's 15. Here I obtain zero. It's still negative in the, it's still non positive. Sorry, but I have a feeling that you have a problem with signs somewhere. Uh, 12 minus 3 minus 15, it's minus 6. Pardon? Uh, my, my minus six. Where? The second line. 12 minus three minus 15. Yes, here. here. It's minus six. Uh, yeah, the, the top line is also wrong. I think, I think it's, a com it's my, oh. Yes, it's top is for the second line. The plus. I'm oh, sorry. Line is a plus. It's a plus everywhere, plus and plus. And so plus, let me, plus this, three every time. Here is plus, and so the plus here is 15 minus 21. Wait, it's OK now. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a, even in my paper here, it's not, not the paper, <laughs> hopefully. But in the, dans mon brouillon, là, merde, où est-ce qu'il est le plus, là? Ah, voilà. That's it, yes. There is a plus here. Okay, so now, uh, thank you, thank you, Anna. And so here it's zero. And this is interesting because if you take, this is a part of, if you take, uh, remember you have W, U, and you take uh, its image under chi, and you consider the, uh, the, the conjugates of, of this word, chi of w, and if you take the largest one, if you take u, the largest conjugate of chi of w, uh, largest in the lexicographic order, then you have, then you are all, already this phenomenon, it's equal to zero, then p of uh, a1, a two n plus p of a two a two n minus one will be equal to three times p of a two a two n. And so it's the it's the case where this inequality is an equality, and this happens exactly in this case when you the large conjugate, and in this case this number here is a Markov number. It's the Markov number uh, associated corresponding to to W. Uh, one may con construct all Markov numbers by taking Christopher words and then doing uh, exactly this. Actually, it, it can be expressed differently, but uh, it can be expressed uh, as continent polynomials. This was observed a long time ago by Frobenius. 
or even in the work of Markov. I am not sure, but in Frobenius, you can explicitly see, see these things. Now, I think I have very few times. So I just want to say that uh, the condition here, the condition two, Uh, is an is a version for words which is analog for the uh, to the condition that to the condition for real numbers. Let's say xi, xi. Uh, I, I, I keep this. Uh, L of xi strictly smaller than three. Uh, and L of xi, where L of xi is the Lagrange number. Of, uh, of Xi. It's, uh, all, all this work is an attempt to, to give uh, proofs, uh, the motivation of this work, of this theorem here, is to give a finitary proof of uh, result of, of theorems of Markov. And uh, uh, the, of the Markov's theorem is about numbers whose uh, Lagrange number is smaller than three. Um, I do not have re uh, how much time I have. Uh, Narat? Just, uh, just about three minutes. Yes, yes. So, uh, um, so I using the theorem. I can prove, uh, I mean, uh, I would say elegantly, but <laughs> it depends on your point of view. Uh, let's say I can prove uh, like, uh, Markov's theorem on, on real numbers, on quite a uh, on real numbers with uh, Lagrange numbers smaller than three, but with the but with the condition with the hypothesis, I, I need a, an hypothesis that C is quadratic number. So, I mean, the theorem of Markov is about real numbers. Uh, to, to say it quickly, the theorem of Markov is about real numbers. And uh, using uh, this combinatic and words uh, characterization, I can prove it for, but with a stronger hypothesis that C is quadratic. And so I, I finish with my question. Uh, the question is, find a proof, find an independent proof. Independent means that it is not using Markov theory, because find an independent proof of xi. Uh, xi is a real number. X, L, L of xi smaller than 3 implies xi quadratic. This 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 result is true by Markov theory. Uh, Markov theory says much more, but in, in particular, you if a number satisfies a real number satisfies this condition, then it must be quadratic. And I would like to have a proof uh, of this. 
I have no idea how one could attack this. Uh, if I have this, then uh, if I have this result, then I can use my characterization of Christopher Ward to, to, to complete the proof of Markov's theorem. Uh, of course, this is true, and we know it's true, but that's it. I have finished now. Thank you. Thank you, Christophe. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Christophe? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So I have a question, but I am not able to, <laughs> to technique. Can I ask, Edita Pelantova, can I ask something? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I am interested in technical tools you have used for the uh, proof. It is, already, is it already published, the result? Uh, yes, it's published or it's on the point to be published. It's in uh, advanced in applied mathematics. Perfect. Uh -huh. And can you say... No, just I'm not sure. no it's advanced in applied math. Yes, yes that's it. Uh -huh. yes. Uh, excuse me? Uh, in, uh, do you use just uh, combinatorial on words of uh, some another, say, matrix theory because it is connected with matrix? We, to yes, yes. But there is no deep matrix theory uh, that I mean, uh, yes, there is some, there are some, uh, it's a tech, very technical proof and it's a long proof. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, it's elementary in some sense. It's not, uh, not uh, fancy uh, mathematics, I mean. Uh, yeah, but the result is elegant, so I like it. So I am interested in the proof, so thank yes. you. You can find the proof in... The, uh, <clears throat> I must say the proof looks like uh, the proof in Markov theory, except that avoid at each point infinite words. I never use infinite words. I use only finite words. And uh, it, this is actually my goal, use only finite words. And, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, you... You use the. No, I think I cannot explain more for uh, it's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? No. Okay. If not, uh, thank you very much, Christoph. Thank you.